Castle, um, which is a, it's not actually a castle, but it looks like a castle, but it was a private residence um, when they built it in like Victorian times, or before I think actually. Um, but the ball is um, Victorian themed, so everyone uh, is going to be in Victorian dress. Um, and I feel like a princess, and it's going to be so fun. And we're just driving there at the moment with Tyler. Say hi. Good night. <laughs> um, he's not coming. He's just my he's my coachman. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be heaps of people there, hopefully. And it's going to be food. Yum. And uh, yeah, both my sets of parents are going to be there. So it's going to be nice to see them as well. Oh, this is so pretty. The drive there is really pretty. I'll show you the lights. Look at this. Oh. Check out this crazy place. Yeah, it's all very um, huge bar. Done in that uh, consistent style, eh? Nineteen twenties or Art Deco. I like it. This is the boudoir. This is my mum. Hi mum. Hi. <laughs> Miss Conrad. Hi. <laughs> cameras. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Well done. Excellent. It's excellent, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> That chandelier is so pretty. I like what's in this room.
is just please give people respect when they're talking. Um, witty interjections, of course, encouraged. <laughs> so everyone on the other side of the table has food, and we don't yet. <laughs> but we will soon, hopefully. <laughs> Dessert. Conrad already got two bowls of dessert because yes. it was clever, and I just put mine on the side in the in the sauce. But yours isn't polluted, which is the best. <laughs> this is probably for vegetarians. Actually, who just wanted the um, or not vegetarians, but you know, wimps. <laughs> True. Yes. Uh, that's an old one. I require your devoted attention and gasp of astonishment and appreciation should the miracle work. If it's not work, I'm afraid I have to leave tonight's occasion and seek refuge in a remote country district.
As an elf, I'm quite used to bragging, <laughs> to speaking at great length about our acts of valour, our acts of heroism, our daring on the battlefield, all these things become second nature. Um, but when an act exists outside of elves, I find it a little hard to accept the accolades and the title of hero. I found it doesn't sit comfortably with me. Um, well done then. <laughs> <laughs> it was in that uh, life for many of us was going to change. And I believe in many ways the, the wizard and the duke, uh, the reason that they started the um, elves was to address issues very similar in that the Vietnam War was starting to cause a great deal of consternation within. To make it short and not cryptic, it might be the first. <laughs> the No Hope Regiment is the dual and elite regiment of the 8th Whitestone Grenadiers in Omaru. It is the Highland Regiment and we wear those big fluffy things on our heads, which don't normally, you see, they're not normally adorned with Canterbury fizz, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you are responsible for that, Julia. As we are bubbers. We are the bubbers of elves. We are the, the hoily bags or the crybabies of elves because we came along last. And we've got so many people to blame as bubbers do. But I believe at the time it was Ensign Gollidge, it was Wesley who invited us along to come to the campaign in Maruya in 1999. And Wesley said, gosh, you silly Victorian chaps in Omaru, I'm sure you could bring your penny farthings on campaign. <laughs> he said, where's campaign? Is this is elves yet. I think I know what it's about. We don't have any uniforms. No problem. We'll supply them. Of course, being a fat bastard, I, I was the one who got the t-shirt. <laughs> and hid in the back of all the photo. That really hurt. But the fun that I had on that campaign was truly ridiculous in that the Maruya Muxlingian militia indulged in such things as full of gin, pints of gin, effluent pond snorkeling. <laughs> the mountain bike that had the rider on it, Macbeth was his name, he was their weird, atop with snorkel and goggles, instead of leaping into the effluent pond, they were dairy farmers, it was early days of Bond Terrible, <laughs> actually did a full somersault and smashed his face on the handlebars underneath the F1 would then come out of the of the pond with blood and go oh, with a full a full lung of it. <laughs> but, but it got worse for this reason that standing by were their nursing corps with high pressure hoses with detergent and then and then I think cold water, which blasted off the remains of his clothes, which he was <laughs> Now we had I think there are a few young ladies on this campaign. <laughs> I remember coming, to, so the, the least interesting bit were the penny farthings. And I thought, that's the most ridiculous weekend of my life. And I'd like to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the founders, thank you very, very much. Because without all you silly fellows and ladies, we wouldn't be here enjoying your company. Thank you all very much. To elves and our glorious enemies. Nice. Decent, sensible, bourgeois, respectable love. <laughs> and well, secondly, well, well, you don't put up with shit without making some attempt to annoy those people that are doing it to you. <laughs> which was therefore, we, quite, we developed a form of uh, grim revolutionary technique which I call the fun revolution. Now, if your aim is fun and your means are fun, you have reached a perfect state of being. It does not matter if you win or lose. So long as you're having fun and they don't make you eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beginning of the word elf. When the university pacifist society, and I can't stand pacifists, <laughs> so they're a bunch of moral pricks. Because <laughs> pacifism produced Hitler because they didn't stop him in time. So I'm not a pacifist. And I ask you, Brother, it's not a pacifist army, it's just a non violent army, which is not quite the same thing. Pacifists become pretty violent towards themselves. 
<laughs> and suffer horribly in jails and go and become martyrs and set fire themselves because they're basically masochists. <laughs> to avoid being a masochistic um, pacifist or a, or a bully boy militaristic no, sort of activist, there's this nice, gentle position in the middle where you have all the pleasure of being militaristic bastards strutting around, boasting and bragging and picking fights without actually getting hurt. Very <laughs> we have had some actions in the Imperial Army, and I see that Nick Harper is with us once again. Who won't be embedded in all violence, which is a wonderful occasion, about the same time as the Hebrides was the uh, sort of the the Orkney being invaded. Uh, we had a big mess in, uh, uh, in Mollington, and alas, Nick was attempting a feat of some considerable skill to get his one beam of the raft to the other one, and alas, he slipped and fell and crapped to the ground to our horror. But he was still alive, so we're not worried. <laughs> so, this is the army as a, as a non violent warrior group. It is the warrior virtues of heroism, nobility, self sacrifice, all of its are wonderful things. Because once you lose those, we end up a whingy, whiny, bloody holy Joe or some sort of other thing. <laughs> Leave that to the priest, that sort of stuff. So I'd therefore like to remind you all that ALFS is a remarkably odd institution. I know of nothing else like it. It's not a reenactment group. It really exists now. We're doing <coughs> This is making history. We're, we're not acting out history. We are history. <laughs> <laughs> So we've just finished and we're about to go home. Um, it was really fun and there's lots of dancing and everything. Um, I'm so tired though. My dress is really tight so I'm looking forward to going home. Uh, the castle looks really cool at night. The pretty lights up to the day. Now I'm home again and I'm going to take my shoes off and my makeup off and go to bed because I'm so tired. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe. See ya.